Before you start, it is highly recommended that you get on of those grounded wires and wear it in your wrist, as it will provide an ESD protection. After step 3 on the website, you will need to remove the power button PCB part first. It is holding the fans and the white cable as shown here. When removing the screws that holds the heatsink, it is highly recommended that you follow the numbers in reverse order, and then, when you put it back, you will need to follow the numbers in correct order. As it will be shown later on. So, you will go 8, 7, 5, 4, 3, 2, and then 1. Then remove the other screws, which are holding the fans. Hold the heatsink from both ends. As shown here. And at the same time, Try to move it up with an angle gently. It should be removed right off. If you feel it not moving at all. Then try to move it left and right carefully, because at first, it will be held by the sticky taps and the old paste. Take your time to remove it. After opening the fans and clean them, you can put them back on and hold them to the heatsink with aluminium tape. You can use other tape if the spot is touching the PCB. Also be careful not to damage the RGB ribbon cables when removing the heatsinks, as they are under the fan's heatsink. Use such a tool to scrape of the edges of the GPU and CPU die as shown here. Do that very carefully. As there are small SMD parts on the surface of the package shown here. Use solvent like acetone or alcohol, or any other compatible solvent. Use tissue to swipe the old paste of the die in a circular motion, that should make the process easier. You can use your finger to remove the sticky tap of the GPU memory and the VRAMs. Scrap it to the middle of the IC chip, and it should be removed easily, as shown here. You do not have to remove the captain tape. But if you found a lot of old paste under it, then remove it carefully, keep it aside, as you will need to put it back on after cleaning is done. Use a bit of solvent to soften the old paste, then use a wooden skewers to remove the excessive material. Be gentle and careful with the SMD parts as they are mounted on the chip itself and could be easily damaged. Now use the same method shown previously to clean the heatsink. Now that everything is well cleaned, we can start to apply the thermal pads. However, if you are planning to use same thermal pads I used, then make sure that the face which is smooth, to be facing down not up like I did here, so that it should be much easier removing the cover. It is also recommended to use a sticky pad, which will make sure that the heatsink will stick into the GPU memory IC, if not, then a quick solution is provided at the end of the video. You should get this results. As shown every IC and VRAM is covered with thermal pad. For the final step. Do a final and quick clean to the heatsink, as well as the CPU and GPU dies. Now we can apply the thermal paste. We will use the dot method for the GPU, and then we'll use straight line for the CPU as shown here. Try not to add too much as I did here in the CPU side. The dot size should be 3 to 4 millimeters. Now remove the plastic cover of the thermal pads. If you are using the same ones I used, then the mesh here should be facing up, as I mentioned, not down as shown here. So that it will be easier to remove them. With an angle. Hold the heatsink with both hands and get it under the screen, then. Position it into place. Apply light pressure above the dies to make sure that the paste is flattened enough all over the die surface. With all this been done. Now all you have to do is to put the screws back on in the correct numbers order starting from one. Then you may do the other ones. As you can see here, because the pads I used are not sticky type. 
This area of the heatsink is not touching the memory and that could introduce overheating problem to the memory IC chips. A SUS should have made a screw somewhere to hold this in place, however. I made a quick solution that should get the job done. I added on a pad over the VRAM, which will hold the structure down against the top cover and a foam to the other side. Make sure that the pad and the foam are leveled. The pad and the foam will press this section into place. And that should solve the issue. For now. Hope that helped you out. Peace.